Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I want to show you a push stick that I was introduced to by Dale Nish when I attended BYU, and I think it's the best push stick I've noticed. I've seen some out there that are being used, and I just shudder when I watch them, thinking there's no control. Well, this is the one that Dale showed me. And the nice thing about it is that when you're holding onto it, you are able to control a much larger piece of the wood as it passes between the blade and the fence. Now, it's easy to make, and I'll show you. I've already made this one, so I'm going to use that same one as a pattern, but it was just freehand drawn. Starting off with a piece of plywood, 12 inches by 5, and I want mine to be tall so that I'm up above the, my uh, fence and my hand does not interfere with that. So I'm going to set this on here. And I'm up about 3 sixteenths off, off of the bottom. You'll see why momentarily. I'm going to cut a little circle in there, out in there. Makes it a little easier to hold on to. All right, I'm going to go over to the jointer. Now, I've got my fence or my uh, table drop down, so I'm taking about a 3 sixteenths of an inch pass. I put a piece of uh, masking tape on there so that when my front end hits that, it will stop where I want. You can make these out of plywood, solid wood. I don't think I would use particle board or MDF. I think you need a little more strength, especially when you see how it get, becomes sacrificial when you start using it. Now I'm just going to follow that shape on the bandsaw. You can do this just as easily with a jigsaw. You can even use a coping saw if you had to. Mostly following the line. Fortunately, I've got a edge sander over there that will compensate for my less than perfect bandsaw. Let's go over there. It's a big six inch. More, just to make it a little more comfortable when you're holding it. Now I've got a two inch bit in my drill press. That's one of those fish bits that I like so much. It's actually a little bit fast for that diameter of a bit. Last thing I need to do, and I'll do it with a handsaw, I want to make sure that that area where the joiner stopped is, uh, if not square, a little bit undercut. And then I'll go in here with my chisel Just clean that up. It's really important that that surface right here not be higher than this surface over here that went over the jointer. That way when I'm using this at the table saw, I'll have good contact and positive contact with the board that I'm pushing through. Make sure there's no bump. If anything, I would actually cut a little bit of a relief right there just to make sure. Okay, last thing we'll do is using the uh, router. And I've got a, I have a uh, chamfer bit in there. It's not up very high. And I just want to put this on so that I have, makes it a little easier on the hand. A 
And then on the back. All right, let's go over to the table saw. Now, it's really important when you're ripping something and your blade is close enough to your fence that you need to use something other than your hand, you want to be able to have control over that piece. And if you're trying to do that with one of those push sticks that literally grabs it like just like that, you really don't have a ton of control. Because this is flat, when I lay that on there, I can actually make sure that that part of the wood stays tight to the fence. I'll show you. And it's sacrificial, so there's going to be times you're going to run through your push stick. But that's a good reason to make two or three of them when you make one. And that'll last for a certain amount of time and I'll have to replace it. But, much safer. I made mine high enough so that I was clear my fence so that that wasn't bumping into my fingers. I'll give full credit to Dale Nish for showing me that. I think it's the best design, as simple of an instrument as it is, for a push stick on your table saw. Hope that helps.